Hey, what's up? Today, in an attempt to reclaim the waffle from the pasty, bland, continental breakfast version that we all hate, I'm gonna show you how to make a very good tasting one from scratch using bread style fermentation and brown butter. From there, using the same techniques, I'm gonna show you how to make two fancy brunch style waffles, one sweet, one savory. To get started, I'm gonna grab a high setting container 12 to 24 hours before we want waffles and into that measure 200 grams of room temperature water, a small pinch of instant yeast or just enough to cover the surface like this, then 200 grams of strong all-purpose flour. Next, I'm gonna grab a sturdy spoon and give everything a good stir to combine. What I'm mixing here is called a poolish and most people watching this video probably are familiar that this brings a ton of additional flavor and a unique crispness to a yeasted bread. It's just flour, water, and a little bit of yeast that you ferment over night before you make a dough. Once I've got any dry spots mixed in and the poolish is looking all gloppy like this, I'm gonna pop a lid on it and ferment it here on the counter for 12 to 24 hours. The next day, this poolish is fully ripened and very active. This stuff's gonna make our waffles taste a lot more complicated and give them a crispy, chewy texture that's usually only reserved for a nice baguette. Now to make this poolish into waffles, I'm gonna preheat a small saucepan over high heat. Once that's hot, in goes 165 grams of butter or about a stick and a half. Right away, the butter's gonna start getting really foamy. That's what I want. I'm making brown butter here and the foaming is the water content of the butter boiling off. As that water cooks off, it's gonna get closer to pure butter fat and the milk solids are gonna sink to the bottom of the pot and get dark brown and toasty like this. Now, to stop the browning and to cool off the butter, I'm gonna add in 240 grams of cold milk right from the fridge. Using a wooden spoon, I'm gonna stir that to combine while scraping the bottom of the pot to loosen up any brown milk solids. Then in goes 240 grams of buttermilk. If I added the buttermilk with the milk before the high heat of that butter would have probably split the acidic buttermilk into curds and whey and it would have been a grainy mess. Now, the combo of both milks right from the fridge has cooled this butter down enough to be mixed with everything else. Back to the cutting board, I'm gonna flip all 400 grams of that overnight poolish into a medium bowl. Behind that comes five grams of vanilla extract, one large egg, and then all of my brown butter milk. That doesn't look very delicious. From here, I'm gonna grab a whisk and give this mixture a stir to get the poolish evenly distributed throughout the wet stuff. There we go. Now in goes 275 grams of strong all-purpose flour, 10 grams of salt, 35 grams of sugar, and three grams of baking soda. The whisk goes back in and in general, combining hydrated flour with fresh dry flour takes a little bit more work to get combined properly and probably won't yield a perfect lumpless batter like you're looking for. That's not a problem though. Try for fewer lumps if you can get them, but accept that there will always be some lumps. And that looks like finished waffle batter. Now for the main event, I'm gonna grab my waffle maker. I bought this one at the recommendation of America's Test Kitchen gear reviews. And so far so good. It could cook two waffles at once and it allows me to pick how crispy I want my waffle. Once the waffle maker is preheated, I'm gonna give it the unglamorous but necessary dose of pan spray that it needs. Then to portion the waffle, I'm gonna use this handy cup that came with the maker. This batch size makes six jumbo waffles by the way, but use a three quarter cup measure if you don't have this one. From here to properly cook this waffle, it's pretty much the same process as it would be at any Inn and Sweets continental breakfast from coast to coast. One detail though to prevent overflow is to use the cup itself to get an even spread on this batter from edge to edge, and that looks good. Now the lid goes down and this is gonna get inverted to help spread the batter and open up the top side for waffle number two if you're gonna be making it. After five minutes, when I flip this waffle over, you can see that it has that classic Belgian style waffle look with those deep pockets. But this time, thanks to the Polish, it's gonna have a lot more flavor more aroma and just better texture overall. For me, the hot waffle on a plate with butter and maple syrup is pretty much the coziest thing that I can think of. The combo of the toasty, crispy outside with that yeasty, almost boozy, chewy interior creates something that is so much more deep and flavorful than that vapid, pasty stuff that you're used to. These are dope, they're double dope, they're five dope, six dope, they're just very, 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 very dope. But, I promised you guys fancy brunch waffles at the beginning of this video, and nothing is fancier than mixed berry compote with cheesecake whipped cream. But real quick, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Noom. Over the summer, I started using Noom's program to stay on track health-wise, given the fact that I'm nearly constantly surrounded by hyperpalatable foods like waffle cheesecake, for example. The start eating less dense lesson from Noom actually really helped me out a lot with this because I actually know what caloric density is now and that I probably shouldn't be eating six slices of pizza. Instead, maybe two would suffice. I also know a little bit more about my emotional eating trigger so that when there is food around and I'm feeling 
feeling a little bit stressed, I'm less likely to indulge. The reason Noom actually works is a combination of cognitive behavioral psychology, human coaches, and tested science. When you combine all three of those together, people actually start changing their behavior, which you guys know is super hard to do. Overall, I told Noom that my big goal was to have more energy and more focus for the things that I actually like to do. And diet plays a huge part in that, and Noom has really helped. So to give Noom a try, go to noom.com slash Brian Lagerstrom and take your free 30 second quiz to see how Noom can help you out. Noom has really brought a lot of mindfulness to my eating and has helped me out. So to take your free 30 second quiz, the link is in my description. Thank you, Noom. Oh, hey, look at this bowl of freshly mixed waffle batter that's fully ready to go. To make some berry compote to go with these waffles, I'm gonna preheat a medium nonstick pan over high heat and into that measure 350 grams or one bag of frozen mixed berries and a small splash of water, about 20 grams. As that comes to a simmer, I wanna mention that I didn't buy fresh berries here because I didn't wanna buy individual pints of blackberries, strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries. This way I get exactly what I need. The only downside is that these strawberries are way too big. So I'm gonna pop those out real quick and then chop them into chunks that are roughly the same size as the blueberries and then slide those back in. At this point, I'm gonna add in 25 grams of maple syrup to cut through some of the tartness of the berries and then 25 grams of lemon juice to bring a freshness to the whole thing. I'll stir that to combine and then bring it back to a simmer. After about six to eight minutes of cooking this over high heat, the fruit has gotten slightly broken down and the juices have thickened to the point where when I drag my spatula through it, there's a nice wide trail left behind like this. Now I'm gonna take this off the heat, transfer it to a bowl, then stick it into the fridge to cool it down as quickly as possible. From there, I'm gonna make what I'm calling cheesecake whipped cream because it tastes like a mix of both of those two things together. To make that into my stand mixer, I'm gonna drop 225 grams or eight ounces of cream cheese, 150 grams of heavy cream, and a small pinch of salt. The whisk attachment goes on and I'm gonna spin this on low speed for a few seconds so that the cream cheese doesn't splash out the cream everywhere. And once those are getting a little bit more combined, I'm gonna speed this up to high and whip this for about one minute or so or until that cream cheese and cream are well combined and starting to thicken up like this. From there, I'm gonna sweeten this thing up a little bit with 20 grams of powdered sugar. If we use regular sugar here, the whipped cream wouldn't be as stable and it would get a little bit weepy. Now, the whisk attachment goes back on and I'm gonna whip this up for another 15 seconds or so or until that sugar is fully dissolved into the cream and there we go. This stuff is really crazy, you guys. It tastes just like a cheesecake, but it's lighter and spreadable, perfect for a waffle. Speaking of which, I've got a freshly toasted one right here ready to rip. That's gonna get a heavy dollop of that cheesecake whipped cream, then a generous few spoonfuls of that mixed berry compote. After it's been cooled, that compote's pretty saucy and has a lot of fun berry textures and plenty of moisture to stand in for maple syrup. If you guys like sweet stuff for breakfast, this is pretty much it. It's super rich and very luxurious, but the the tartness of the berries and the texture of that waffle help keep the whole thing in balance. A very dope waffle indeed. But Bri, how about that fancy savory waffle? I'm so glad you asked. How about a cheesy chive crispy ham waffle with fried eggs? Back to the part where we have finished waffle batter ready to go. This time though, I left out the vanilla extract because cheese and vanilla aren't really like the best thing to do together. Otherwise though, this is the exact same waffle batter and into it, I'm gonna measure 225 grams of sharp cheddar, 225 grams of pepper jack cheese, and then 25 grams of minced chives goes in as well. Now, using rubber spatula, I'm gonna stir everything to combine. I'm a loser, I can't even stir chives. Okay, once the cheese and the chives are properly folded into this vanilla-less waffle batter, I'm gonna grab my waffle maker, give it a spray, and then layer in a torn piece of relatively thick sliced ham. From there, a full scoop of the cheese batter goes on top, then one more slice of ham is gonna get torn on top. I did try mixing the ham in with the batter, by the way, and it just steamed and made the whole thing a little bit softer. Putting it on the outside, touching the iron makes it a lot more crisp. While that waffle cooks, we're gonna fry some eggs to put on top. So into my medium nonstick pan goes one, squeeze of olive oil, then two large eggs. I'm gonna hit those eggs with a generous pinch of salt, then about 10 cranks or so of fresh cracked black pepper. I'll reduce the heat to low now and top these eggs with a lid so that they can slowly fry and steam for about two to three minutes. After about three minutes over low heat, this egg's been gently fried, the whites are set, and it's looking ready to go. Back at the waffle maker, it's time to check on this cheese waffle and Oh my lord, look at this thing. You guys, it's got salty, crispy ham on the outside with a bunch of fried caramelized cheese. There's some chives in there to bring freshness and all the moisture comes from egg yolks and a little bit of hot sauce. All of a sudden you find yourself being quite the luxury brunchinista. Whether you go with the classic maple butter combo here or one of these two fancier waffles, it turns out that when you add bread starter to a waffle, it tastes way more pro. I hope you guys find yourself brunching on these sometime soon. Let's eat this thing.